Well, thank you very much for being here. This is a great turnout for a presentation on an alternative way in which we can dredge the Petaluma River regularly. Um, I want to share with you some of these pictures ahead of our presentation because, as you can see from the alternating pictures, we've got some great photos from Scott Hess. We've got some photos of today's reality from Christopher Stevick. And I want to also acknowledge Mark Mooney for helping me to put together this presentation, including uh, custom music for your presentation tonight from a local group called The Incubators. So it's a, a song about Petaluma and River Dredging. So everybody's getting in on this act and we're going to get this done. I really want to thank the Women's Club for allowing us to be here tonight with an amazing facility they have and certainly the capacity to, to let us do our presentation. Let me tell you a little bit about what you're going to experience tonight. Besides these pictures for right now, we're going to have a presentation about river dredging that's probably going to last 45 minutes, maybe a little longer, and then plenty of time for question and answer after that. So we'll have somebody bring this wireless mic to you so that we can hear your questions clearly and hopefully get you the answers you need. I want to thank Fishman Supply as well. They provided some cups tonight for our water, and also Tom and Linda Corbett who went out and got those. So uh, thank you to the whole community for coming out and trying to make this work. While we see the before prettier pictures and the now pictures, I, I want to share with you a little bit about myself and how I, how I got into this position. There. All right, incubators. Thank you, though. Uh, anyway, my, my name is Jeff Main, and I've been in town since 1982. Moved here to raise a family, and was pretty involved in the schools, in youth sports, and scouting. And then later, with my business here, I became very involved in the downtown. And I was on a couple of boards in a very ancillary way, the Chamber of Commerce and the Museum Board. But where I really spent a lot of my time, 15 years, was with the Petaluma Downtown Association, getting to know the issues of our downtown, including the health of our river, participating in events, running those events. So I'm, I'm pretty well versed that way. And as it happened since 19 or 2008, I've had my office at the River House. You probably remember that as a restaurant. And so my office is downstairs, and I get a nice view of our increasingly growing sandbar. So I became somewhat concerned about it and uh, have been working on this now for about seven months. Uh, you're going to see a slide that kind of typifies the difference between private enterprise and government. And, it, and sometimes government moves slowly. That's not their fault. That's just the way it is. So we find ourselves here at the end of April, and you're going to see a presentation that I hope culminates, hopefully with your help, in putting this on the ballot in March of 2020 so that we can all vote on a resolution and uh, get this thing drenched regular. So I'm just going to take a quick minute and I'm going to turn this off and we will get to our presentation. So I've attended, like I'm sure many of you, a lot of dredging, dredging presentations that have gone on in our town. Uh, we've hosted them for years, over a decade, and we hear no a lot. Uh, the river has been a problem for a long, long time, uh, going back to the days of McNear when he changed the way the river looked. But I've run into people from the 50s who remember conversations about, let's just concrete it over. We don't know what to do. We're just going to say goodbye to the river, and that'll be the end. And fortunately, they didn't have sway, and we continued on. But we had some brilliant folks who decided that if we called it a river, we didn't change it, we just called it a river, that it would be federally recognized, and we would get dredging, and it worked great. But it's not a coincidence that that was also a time of federal earmarks, 
when our local politicians who continue to represent us well, both locally like David Rabbit in Sonoma County and in Washington with uh, Congressman Huffman, they're doing a great job, but things have changed. And we don't have earmarks anymore, and we can't poll favors anymore, and we have to qualify on our own merits. And that is really, I think, why we're in the situation we're in. That's a hard pill to swallow, to, to realize on the merits, we just don't measure up the way other rivers do in the United States. And so we're told no, as politely as they can, and they come out here regularly. I mean, I've attended meetings that uh, go way back where it was just Petaluma and the Army Corps. And the more we would start asking for money, the more other communities would come in and ask for money. And all of a sudden last year, we've got Napa at the table, we've got Vallejo at the table, we've got San Rafael at the table, all with their own legitimate issues, just like us. But they've been at our table for so long that now it's recognized as a regional problem. We had Congressman Huffman on the Sea Scouts boat last fall, and he as much as admitted that all of you guys have a problem, and it's a regional problem that's probably going to demand a regional solution. Well, if we can't get enough money out of Congress to dredge our own river, how much are we going to get as our share of a regional problem? So earmarks are gone. We keep doing the same thing. We send somebody back every year asking for money, and they do the best they can, but they come away empty-handed. So just like when we decided to call it a river and we took matters into our own hands to solve it and let someone else pay for it, now we need to recognize that it's our river and it's our problem and we need to solve this ourselves. One of the most recent meetings I attended at the Yacht Club with Congressman Huffman and the head of the Army Corps, the head of the Army Corps as much as said, we will come back probably one more time when A, we get the money given to us by Congress, and B, when you can show us a plan for how you're gonna take this over. So what you're about to see is a challenge to, to that mandate. How are we gonna handle this from now on? Because we want them to come back one more time and do a dredging that is now 15 years or more too late. So the problem is four times greater than if we'd been doing it regularly. I know some of you in the back might have trouble seeing this, but does anybody recognize this community? I, I don't want to pick on them, but this is a community that is close to us. It's in the bottom. But here, yeah, you're exactly right. And I took these pictures myself. You go down into this community, and what you're looking at right now was a waterway. That was the channel in the very middle there. And what you're looking at is footpaths was actually a duck. And it silted over, and it silted over, and they didn't know what to do. So they were paralyzed. And my point in showing you Bahia is indecision or paralysis it is a decision. Because the silt's not gonna stop just because we don't know what to do. When I took that picture, a lot of the paint is fading. That is not a vibrant community. It's a community that is resigned to not being a water community anymore. So that's my point there. Uh, I don't know that you can say that anymore. But it's interesting that we need to save ourselves. You remember this picture from the paper, the, the mini campground out there in the middle of the, the sandbar. That picture is a couple years old. And the problem is a lot worse. Remember this picture? That when you have hands across the river, your eye naturally goes to the middle of the water. But that's not the middle of the waterway. The middle of the waterway is where this person is, barely at their ankles. And that picture is over a year old. So the question is, are we next? because we don't know what to do, or we keep doing the same ineffectual thing. This was a boat that came up here. Anybody want to guess what year? 2006. So our problem is not new. Our problem is ongoing, and the solution has to be ongoing too. This was a real mess. 
I mean, when you look at that boat, the Petaluma people from the Yacht Club came out, took ropes, tied it off to where it could sit up straight. You can see the rope there going to the dock, another one out back, so that the sailboat wouldn't fall over. And that was 13 years ago. We used to be the envy of the bay. How, how many people remember the river festival we used to have when I moved to town? You announced it. That was a ball. We had boats vying for dock space. They were side tied four deep into the turning basin. We had thousands of people on the shore. It was a party, and everybody came from around the Bay Area. Been gone for years. The Yacht Club here, one of their most important events all year long, the Memorial Day celebration. Again, Yacht Club's coming up, partying, having a good time. People talking about Petaluma, because we're the only community where you can come up into the heart of our downtown and play safely, you can't do that anymore. The memorial event had to be canceled. Even the lighted boat parade, where it's not that heavy with boat traffic, and we had a thousand people on the shore, when we had to cancel that for safety reasons last year, you didn't hear a bunch of people up in arms. We're resigned, like the idea. We don't know what to do. All we do is ask for money, and all they do is say no. The game has changed, and we haven't realized that yet. So we need to do something different. We're going to talk about the dredging of the Petaluma River, and I want to share with you two successful models and one accident that I believe in. The first model is the Golden Gate Bridge maintenance. We've all heard the story. It's such a massive undertaking that you have to go from one end all year long until the other end, and then you gotta start over again. It's time to maintain it once more, and it's just that constant loop. And you're gonna see that theme in this presentation here tonight. The other model I wanna share with you is one I'm very familiar with. In the late 1990s, the local merchants in downtown Petaluma got together and said, you know, we need to do some things but we don't have the money to do it ourselves. We need to figure out what we can do to raise the kind of money to do what we want. They wanted to do marketing and make ourselves a destination location. They wanted to provide extra security. They wanted to keep paint up and make the place more beautiful, but they didn't have the money. So a mechanism existed to create a business improvement district, and they did. The zone is in the downtown core, and it goes out a little bit into the periphery. But all the merchants voted for it, and they could have said no. But 50% plus one of those merchants said, you know what, for the greater good, I want to do this. And it got voted in. Now, every year, they have to go in front of the city council and have a chance for the businesses to say, you know, we don't want it anymore. And if there was 50% plus one in opposition, it would go away. So there is a mechanism to unwind it, and that's important in case something's not working right. So it took a majority vote to eliminate it, but it hasn't happened anywhere close because for the greater good, those businesses are benefiting. Now there's different rings of assessment within the Downtown Association BID. The ultimate core, right in the heart of the downtown, they pay more because they benefit more. There's an outer ring where those businesses still benefit, but maybe not quite as much, and so they pay a little less. And then there's a third ring in the periphery where they know if we're vibrant and we're bringing people to town, they will benefit, but not in the core, so they pay just a little less. And the whole thing works great and has for 20 years. So it's a defined assessment with a defined benefit those benefits I mentioned, marketing, security, beautification, they can't be changed. It's in the legislation that those businesses voted on and approved. So the money grows into one account, it's got a board that operates that fund, and it can only be spent in that manner. And it's accountable to the city every year to make sure it's working and doing what we want. The axiom I want to share with you Entrepreneurism and private enterprise usually more efficient than government. 
We want to create what that popular buzzword is, the public-private partnership, where we're working with government to get things done in a more expeditious manner. This slide here isn't really as appropriate as it was in the last presentation I gave. I had the good fortune about a month ago to be in the kitchen of one of your members, Rosemary, and Rosemary heard me out, and all of a sudden, the women's club took off with this idea. And not just the name. The sun had not set the next day, and we had a name, we had an acronym, and we had a logo. So Rosemary Hart, Susie Muscatel, Jill Olson, Barbara Crandall, Catherine Wells, and Linda Corbett, thank you for tearing the cover off this and making it a reality. So what are our goals? We want to provide river dredging every eight years, and we want to do it without federal, state, or even local government financial assistance. Not many people realize that when the Army Corps comes to town, they don't do the entire dredge. The city is responsible for dredging in the marina and in the turning basin around those docks. The city's share, I mean, how are we going to pay for that? The Army Corps could come here tomorrow, and do we have that much money? I mean, you're going to see what it costs in a minute. It's a big deal, so we want to take that off the city's shoulders because we know they're not in a financial condition to have to pay for that. We also know that because we have a healthy river, more citizens are going to participate in it with recreation and other activities, bringing back our festivals, the kind of quality of life that we used to enjoy and we don't now. We want to facilitate commerce. We are here because we're a river town that did commerce with San Francisco over 150 years ago. But we're doing commerce today with a properly dredged river. Depending on who I've talked to, it's anywhere between $250,000 and $750,000 worth of volume that we're losing every year because boats, festivals, aren't being held in what used to be our viable river in our turning basin because they can't access it. We need to recognize as one of our goals that when everyone in the city benefits from a healthy river, fairness dictates everybody's got to give just a little bit. We want a funding mechanism that recognizes that multifamily, that's apartment buildings, people that rent for profit, commercial water users, commercial buildings run for profit, they need to contribute just a little more than the single family homeowner. We need to create a system of assessment that can be duplicated. Remember I told you there were other people at the table when we're trying to get our dredging money, Napa, Santa Fe, Vallejo, and that it's a regional problem that we all share? Well, we have a solution, and the solution can be duplicated, and we can help those other communities, which in turn you're going to see will help ourselves. So we need whatever we do to be able to be duplicated. So let's talk about our dilemma and how to fix it. We talked about how every citizen benefits when the river's clean and fully accessible. Not many people know this, but several times a year, we need to have a free-flowing river because our Ellis Creek water treatment plant has to discharge into that river. Can you imagine if it was plugged up and stagnant what that discharge would look like to our quality of life? So we want to make sure we have a clean and flowing river for that reason as well. And just like our folks in Mejia, silt isn't going to wait if we choose to wait. So we've got a problem. We have a $40 million flood fix upriver that never anticipated the kind of shallow experience we've got right now in the turning basin. That's a problem that jeopardizes that project. That's a problem that could cause flooding in homes. I will tell you that in this last storm from a month ago, two businesses in downtown in the core told me our basement flooded for the first time in I don't know how long. And it might not be just runoff from the streets because they said in one case it was so silty it plugged up their sump pump and the water just kept rising. 
So I think it might come from the river, where there is silt. So we've got a genuine issue here that needs to be dealt with in another manner. And of course, we were the envy of the Bay Area. You saw that sailboat. That guy's not saying great things about Petaluma anymore. I've been in town long enough to remember when everybody was bragging about, I can't wait to go to Petaluma. Then it was, you better not go to Petaluma. Then it was, you're an idiot if you go to Petaluma. <laughs> now nobody bothers to talk about Petaluma because they know it's not even possible. We want it back. We want our commerce back. We want our quality of life back. We're a river town, and that means a boating community. The city is going to benefit when that happens. We're going to be able to have more sales taxes from that sales volume we talked about. They're going to be charging bird fees, and they're going to see property values that are robust because we're an enviable place to live. We need to create an advisory panel, and like I told you at the beginning of this presentation, we need to be on the ballot in March of 2020, not November of 2020, and not a special election which costs too much, but the very next most popular election possible, and that's gonna be March of 2020. So I've got some people that are willing to help, I'm looking for other people that are willing to help to create that advisory panel and a, a campaign, a political campaign that'll go door to door. And I'm talking to some companies that'll run it. And of course, it's got a budget that we're going to have to fundraise for. But that's how we're going to have to do this to get the vote out. Because just like the BID, which was 50% plus one, depending on who you talk to, you got to hope for the best and plan for the worst. It could be two thirds. If this is deemed to be a special assessment instead of a general assessment, then it's going to need two-thirds. So we're going to have to get the word out, and that's going to take some organization and some money. We want to fundamentally create a river enhancement assessment district known as the REED, equal to the size of the city limits of Petaluma. We talked about the successful BID and how they had their own geographic assessment zone. It's in the legislation, it can't be changed. If we have a, an assessment district equal to the size of the city limits, then we're honoring one of our previous goals, aren't we? Everybody pays a little, and everybody gets the benefit when that job gets done. Some people know that our water and our sewer bills are, are sent to the Enterprise Fund within the Public Works Department. The Enterprise Fund is a, is a terrific thing for our idea because you can't turn a profit. Anything that isn't used has to go back to the people. The city council isn't able to borrow against it for other purposes. So it becomes a transparent source where we can grow money that legislatively can only be used for dredging. So that's where we want the read to be held, was in the Enterprise Fund. If it is a special assessment, it's certainly not going to go to the city, and, and the town association general fund can't touch the BID monies it raises. They're two totally separate things, two totally different boards, and that's the idea here. Now, we talked about it can't create a profit, so that means there is the possibility, if we work ourselves in an entrepreneurial way, that it won't cost as much as it has in the past, and our assessments will be reduced. By using an entrepreneurial spirit, you're going to see that some of the things we've been paying big, big money for as an expense are actually a revenue generator, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. We talked about the public-private partnership that will operate because of the funding in the assessment district. Any revenues generated are going to go against that assessment, so if we model ourselves, right, Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. We're going to pay for the entire dredging experience with no offsets. We're going to pretend the Sonoma County Water Agency won't ever give us money for flood control. We're going to pretend that all the grants are going to fail. I know of funds right now that are going to generate $100,000 a year just towards dredging. So if we're dredging every eight years, that's $800,000 that we've never had before. But we're going to plan for the worst, hope for the best, we're going to charge everybody as if there was no offset, but in practical sense, we know it will. We will have offsets. That public-private partnership is going to need a board of directors. They're going to have to oversee the budget of dredging, because if we get 
what we want, the Army Corps is going to come back right away and say, okay, we, we told you and you came through, we're coming next and we're going to take care of it for you. And that means we've got eight years to grow the money to dredge the next time on our own. So that budget, part of the responsibility of the Board of Directors, we want to share with our neighbors the success of our plan. They're going to take the path of least resistance. I'm, I'm sure of it. They're going to ask for our help. We're going to go to their communities. We're going to help them create their own assessment districts. And they may come to us for their dredging needs. And that, again, would help us with our, our offset on our assessments. This plan is not dependent on any other community coming to benefit from us. We're going to plan for the worst, hope for the best, and handle this all on our own as if we're paying 100 cents on the dollar and no one else wants to play. Dredge spoils. We've been paying $5 a cubic yard to throw dirt away. Dirt that other communities have been in our meetings and said, we'll buy them, we'll pay, we need to build up our levees. It's an asset that we can sell with the right mentality. We don't have to pay to have it carted away. And those sales offset our assessment. So the board is going to have seven members. One is going to be a representative of the city council. You can kind of think airport commission, if you will. That's going to operate in a similar way. One director is going to be from public works, because that's where our enterprise fund is. I'm sorry, blocking the way. Um, and then five directors will be appointed by the city council. So we have a total of seven. And that will be the board that oversees the public-private partnership. If we decide to work with other communities, we'll probably buy our own dredge and the necessary barges to do our own dredging. If they say, sorry, we're going to go do our own thing and reinvent the wheel, we'll probably lease our equipment to get our dredging done. And you'll see that dredging is not like the Golden Gate Bridge every day, every year, forever. We're going to have to negotiate with the city of Petaluma to temporarily use the, the spoil sites next to Schollenberger Park so we can park those spoils. Other communities pay even more than we've paid to get rid of their dredge spoils. One of, one of the wildest things I heard when I was looking at this is most of our siltation apparently comes upstream from San Pablo Bay. Do you know where we dump our dredge spoils? San Pablo Bay. <laughs> So, we temporarily use those spoil sites, which no other community has the benefit of, and we dry them and we cart them away, and maybe we sell them. Could be a revenue generator. And again, those revenues are going to come back equally to single family resident, apartment buildings, and commercial buildings that were assessed in the first place. The BID had that three-tiered layer of assessment, and we're going to have tiers of assessment within the read. We need to get out there and educate the citizens, and thank you for being here as our starting point, because if we do plan for the worst, we may need to get a two-thirds majority to create this assessment district, and then go on with our board to educate other communities as well. And then maybe get in the dredging business, because they're not going to want to do that themselves, I guarantee you. So what do we get from a single-family household as a benefit? We get access to the river. Without regular dredging, you can't get to some parts of the river by boat. We can't have some of the festivals if you were to come down to the river by shore right now. How in the world are we going to have a floating boathouse if it doesn't float? Right? I mean, the idea of a floating boathouse is amazing. Take your family, go down, rent boats, play. All the stuff we used to do and we've forgotten about because we don't know how to fix the problem. Because our solution doesn't work. The game has changed and we have to change with it. We get a better sense of community, identity as a river town and pride when we all come together and say, you know what? It was great while it lasted. The feds dredged because we called it a river. It was always our problem. And we need to go back to fixing our problem. We are a destination location with tourism is one of our principal sources of revenue in this town. And the river is the crown jewel that people did and should again come to see. 
so we get better quality of life. Does that mean increased property values? That would be a great benefit, but we need the river for so many other reasons than just your property going up. That benefit actually helps multifamily property owners. They need to have tenants. What's a great reason to be in Petaluma as a tenant? You got things to do, places to go, activities like a river festival to a tenant. So that's going to help the apartment owner to keep their places full. And that's going to be true, especially in a down economy where they're competing with cheaper places to live in other towns. We need to sell the reasons to be in Petaluma. How do commercial property owners benefit? Same thing, property values, if I'm right, but you remember when we had Telecom Valley? Those big telecom companies, worldwide companies, they knew why people wanted to work for them. There was never a doubt. Those people were clamoring to have a job. The problem was those employees didn't know if their family wanted to live in Petaluma. They were paying realtors to take them around town and convince them that we're a great place to be and live and experience and raise your kids. Amenities help that effort. So our employers are going to benefit when we have a river that's accessible and thriving and we have activities around it. So how are we going to pay for it? Well, first we've got to realize that the river needs to be dredged no matter what or we'll end up like our community to the south. With that mandate, we also have to understand that the single family homeowner can't be extraordinarily burdened. We have to minimize their burden as much as we can. So single family residences should be assessed less than multifamily residences. Apartment buildings should be assessed less than commercial properties. And again, the assessment can be added to the sewer water bill and collected inside the enterprise fund. Anybody remember those old thermometers that your library funding drive was collecting? That's exactly what we're going to do within the enterprise fund. You're going to watch your dredging fund grow and grow and not be used for any other purpose than dredging every eight years when that time comes. So bear with me for a second and listen carefully within. The city limits in our proposed read assessment district, we have 16,177 single family residences. We have 879 duplex and mobile home units. And when we're talking about the assessment here, we're talking about the parks, not the people in the parks. We have 4,738 apartment units and apartment buildings in our town. And we have 3,382 commercial businesses occupying our commercial buildings within our city limits. Now we talked about dredging the river, and you know, now it's time to talk about what it costs. When the Army Corps comes to town and does a normal dredge, which is what we're talking about every eight years, it's got a $6 million price tag. The people I've talked to, including dredging companies, say the average is about 150,000 cubic yards, plan on $40 a cubic yard, that's your $6 million. We talked about the city share, but we didn't say what it cost. To dredge in the marina, to dredge underneath the docks in the turning basin, that's the city share, and it's a million five. So every time we need to do a dredge, it's a seven and a half million dollar problem that we got to be prepared for. So how do we do that? Every eight years we want to dredge seven and a half million dollars to do that dredge. That's nine hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars a year, or just over seventy-eight thousand dollars a month, ongoing. Just like the BID, people successfully paying because they understand it's worth it and we get the river dredged when we need it. So we need $78,125 a month. We have 16,177 single family residences. If we charge them each a dollar and a half a month, that's 18 bucks a year. For the benefit that we're talking about, you see what we raise. If we charge $3 per dwelling within a mobile home park, and we charge $6 a door in an apartment building, and we charge $7 a business in our commercial businesses, we raise $79,004, which is enough 
to do our dredging. So there's restrictions on when we can dredge. The Army Corps has them. We talked about a two-year cycle. For environmental reasons, you can only dredge from August 1st until the end of November. So even if the Army Corps came to town and said, okay, it's your turn, we're gonna dredge, that's a two-year cycle. They do the upper reach from what used to be Papa Tavernas up, then they do Papa Tavernas down into the San Pablo Bay. It's a 14-mile stretch. Can't do it within one season, so it has to be done in two. And we're gonna look at that exact same strategy. So, we've got other people at the table saying it's now a regional problem, it's not just your problem, Petaluma, we want in. Imagine if we put them each on the same two-year cycle that they have to be on, but we put them on our schedule. Imagine if Petaluma got dredged in years one and two, and Napa in three and four, Vallejo five and six, and San Rafael seven and eight, and then, just like that Golden Gate Bridge analogy, we come back to Petaluma eight years later and we do it again. And we just keep that cycle going. If the other communities don't want to play, we lease the equipment. And two years later, it's not our problem anymore. We wait six years, we grow the money, and then we dredge again. So by creating a read, we accomplish our goal of funding river dredging without government funding of any kind. We incorporate the REED into the Enterprise Fund because we all know there's distrust of taxes and this is going to be a fund that can't be borrowed against or taken for another purpose. And we try to go out and reach our city partners and say, look, this is what we're doing and how do you feel about it and we'll help you because we know if we do, it'll help ourselves. And we see what they say. It's time for questions. Hey Jeff, John, Cheryl. Um, you left out one little important thing here. All right, over here. Uh, the river tonnage. Okay, we have no more commercial tonnage, and uh, in the past, every commercial uh, boat had to fill out a form. And that form each month went to uh, New Orleans and went through the process and so forth and so on. We have no commercial tonnage above. Uh, upstream of 101 Bridge now, period. We're not the only ones that know that. The yes. Corps knows it. Yes. Our elected officials know it. We don't qualify anymore. That's right. That's right. What concerns me is that the, that the D Street Bridge, by not operating, is saving the city a lot of headache. And what I'm afraid of is the city's going to back off from the use of the bridge. Since there's no dredging, there's no need to have a bridge because opening of the D Street Bridge, so what does that do to the yacht club? Well, good point, good point. One of many, and one of the many reasons why we need to take care of this ourselves. Other questions, please. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Yanni. Um, are you, we already set up to accept private donations? I've already spoken with the people who would like to donate, and you know, before the segment will even start, is there a way to accept donations at this point? There is, just not yet. We, we need to actually form the committee as if this was a political campaign. I've spoken to several companies who run these campaigns, and one has developed a budget. So it's a matter of signing a contract with that company looking at the budget for that political campaign and then moving forward. But before that, I'm also working with an attorney because the, the BID in downtown Petaluma, that was attorney prepared. That wasn't business people having coffee saying, here's what we'll do, sign here. That was a, an official document. It was legislation that was crafted for a specific purpose with vision in mind. And that's exactly what we want here. So that things like it can't be borrowed against or used for any other purpose are included in that when you vote yes. And I think if we do it under, I, I can't remember the name of the act, but it acts just like BIDs, 50% plus one. 
even though it's for a specific purpose. So we need to iron out a little legality yet. We're very close, much closer than I was in September. And then we'll get the committee form, and then we can accept the donations to move forward and, and put this in front of every citizen in Petaluma. Yes? I can talk loud. My name is Dusty Resnick, and the first word in your group is called sustainable. I didn't hear that word once in your presentation. I'm getting used to what the Women's Club just created. That's my apology. Yeah, absolutely. Sustainably taking over river maintenance, isn't that? that that's what it was, yeah, it's fabulous. And sustainability is that same Golden Gate Bridge model. It's the BID model where it just keeps going. And unless we have organized opposition, and there aren't many people that I've met in doing these presentations that say, I want to concrete it over. You know, that's a 70-year-old mentality. So we don't have a lot of opposition. What we have is paralysis because we don't know how to fix this. And there's a model we can use. So absolutely, sustainability is key. Yes, sir. Jeff, um, if I'm not mistaken, the last time the turning basin was dredged, they used FEMA money as opposed to Army Corps money. So I actually have two questions. So first off, is there FEMA money available? Because we are getting close to the point where this is becoming a flood issue now. My understanding of FEMA is they'll come in after the fact. Not before. They don't do preventative flood maintenance. That was our $40 million project, which was from a, a different aspect. So there's nothing on the horizon that says we're going to get money from FEMA. I will say there are a variety of grants and organizations like Sonoma County Water Agency that have flood money, flood prevention money available. And we're going to access all that. That's what the board of the public-private partnership is going to go seek ways to keep our assessment down or lower by finding alternate sources. I mentioned that other source of $100,000 a year that has said, we're here, we want to do this. $100,000 a year, that's $800,000 towards our dredging effort. So we've got ways to raise money, but I'm not sure it's FEMA. And you had a second question. I do. So Jeff, is your committee willing to massage how that money is raised? Because if you look at the model, it's $1.50 per residence. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, homeowners might have more disposable income than those that live in trailers or those that live in apartments. Yet the trailer and apartment folks are at $3 a door, and homeowners are $1.50 a door. So I'm are, you, are, you, are you willing to massage of course. how that of money course. is raised? We, we've got to get to our ultimate goal. but. And, and that's why I said listen carefully, because what I didn't say is every mobile homeowner is going to be assessed $3 a month. What I said was the park, who's making money on our town, is going to be assessed the equivalent of $3 a dwelling in their park. So it's, it's not, I mean, if, they, if there's no rent control, and I understand there's trying to weasel out of rent control in some parks, then they'll, they'll try to pass along three bucks a month, but that's not the intent. So you're saying the mobile home park owners will pay the Are assessed. Cost. The apartment owners will pay. The building. And those that have a water meter pay the dollar fifty. Single family residences, yes. Yes, the owners of the mobile home park will pass it on to the residents. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. They will. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. I'm sorry, so everyone else in here. Um, um, I'm just wondering environmentally with this dredging, I'm not an expert on dredging, so I'm imagining some bulldozer comes in and takes stuff out. Where do they put it? Well, in other communities, they track it down to San Pablo Bay and, and ultimately bring it to us. Uh, or they take it out into the ocean, or they take it up into the delta where there are spoil sites and where they use those spoils. So that's other communities. What we have traditionally done is that same thing in the lower reach, and there's a, a method of dredging called clamshell. That picture I showed you, that big scoop, that's clamshell dredging, and, and traditionally we have used that in the lower reach. In the upper reach, we've used suction dredging, and environmentally, what I'm told is our friends here in Pueblo have no problem with that, but as long as it's coming to see it. going? When it goes to these other places, it, uh, is it just going to cause a problem in these other places? The upper reach goes into Schollenberger Park, well, next to Schollenberger Park, the, the 
uh, retention ponds next to Schollenberger Park. That's where the dredge boils from the upper reach go. That's the suction dredging. The lower reach has traditionally gone out to SB10 in San Pablo Bay or up into the Delta. And has there been studies done that that'll be okay? Or there, are they going to just have Well, that, that's the way we've always done it, and that's the way we obtained permits to do it, and I suppose. The way we've always done it is not working for Petaluma, obviously. Well, it, it did if you want to add cost to dispose of the spoils to your process. But what I'm saying is people are saying, I'll buy it, I'll pay you. Well, come get them. Yeah. And then we're not spending so much. And the other thing I was just wondering is, have we not been doing this dredging on a regular basis at all? Just kind of hanging out? Well, we've never done dredging ourselves. We've always relied on the Army Corps. So when you go back to the designation of the river as a river, that entitled us to federal funds to maintain that now river. And so Congress would, through your marks, give our electeds money they would then give it to, to the Army Corps, and then they would dredge for us. No earmarks, no money to the Army Corps. Now we got to qualify on our own, and as this gentleman stated, we don't anymore. So how often has the dredging been going on? The, well, we heard this gentleman talk about one in 2004 that was a flood-related dredge, an emergency dredge, certainly nothing full, and certainly nothing the extent of the river. So the 14 miles of river and the turning basin itself were being done, I understand, every six, seven years before I came here. It's been 20 years since we've done it, a full dredge. So now the problem is four times as bad. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hi, Kevin Butler with the WE Revenue Winery. Obviously, we look forward to any of this progress. It would greatly help our project uh, next breaking ground here in a few months. A couple quick questions. Uh, the idea of you only maintaining your equipment uh, sort of lofty aspirations, but I couldn't agree with it more, having to deal with a lot of these sort of public works type of things. They have huge markups in what they're doing, and so I don't know if you guys seriously, you could own the equipment and then sub it out to the other, uh, other cities, and we've got a study on this, you have a little committee here in town, because I think that'd be a great way to cut the costs. Well, and then the board is gonna have to decide the feasibility of do we lease, or do we buy, and help other communities and profit in that process. I just didn't know if it's, it's a pretty big deal. I think that'd be a great way because I know the markup on these things is just huge. I'm going to deal with a lot of it right now. Uh, second thing on raising the money, you mentioned about how people would pay on a way out. And you never usually hear these words come from my lips, but have you thought about a small little sales tax? Uh, you could almost geo target it. So it would be people that are river centric, a quarter cent. Uh, I, I would, we would probably be paying a lot because it would be sales tax from what we're doing, but we want to get this going. so. Is that feasible along with your fundraise? You can accelerate the fundraise on a small sales tax? It, it's feasible. I just don't know that it's practical. I, I think when you look at a sales tax, that there are laws, because what we're talking about is not a tax. It's an assessment. It's governed by legislation that deals with the raising of those monies differently than a tax. Doesn't go into the general fund. Sales tax does go into the general fund. But worse than that, sales tax is by law, state of California law, it's capped at a certain amount. And our city is already, rightly so, looking at using some of that to write its own ship. So we're looking at an assessment, not a tax, in a different way. I, there is a, another vehicle, like the BID with the Downtown Association, called a PBID, a property owner's business improvement district. The problem is there are so few actual businesses on the water like you're gonna be that it would be astronomical. So is it feasible? Yes. Is it practical? I can't ask you to pay that kind of burden. We need to grow too much money. You can't earmark sales tax for such a specific project in the city because as usual, sales taxes are sort of easily absorbed if it's small. You know, putting even a $6 assessment on a house, people are gonna squeak even though it's nothing. So I'm just curious, I don't know I, how- I, I'm happy to flesh out with you your thoughts and, and let's let's talk about it. We accelerate it. But anyway, thank you very much for your efforts. Absolutely, absolutely. We've got some more hands raised. Hi, the last time that Jared Huffman was here, just a couple of weeks ago, the question was posed to him about the dredging of the river once again. And he said he was really tired of dealing with the Army Corps because they're not doing their job. And he was going to make sure that the river gets dredged. So I'm wondering if you run this whole proposal by him, since he is our congressman, and we should be getting federal money for this as opposed to it coming out of our own pockets. 
Yes, we should. Yes, I have. A week and a half ago, I was in his office, and he's a very busy guy. He, I got 30 minutes of his time. I used them wisely. I, I talked too fast, but uh, he slowed me down a couple times. But I used them wisely, and, and he is the one who said, if I had earmarks again, I would be using them for you guys. He is passionately trying for us, but the game has changed, and it's not working because we don't qualify, because we don't have the commercial tonnage, because we're not the same kind of river nationwide. So he's doing a great job. Our other elected official, David Rabbit, is doing a great job, but the game has changed, and all they can do is ask. And all we're hearing is a different version of no. So did he like this proposal? I'm sorry? Did he like the proposal that you have? He thinks it's very interesting, and he was in that meeting I attended, right next to the Army Corps, he remembered what they said. He is very frustrated with the Army Corps because he's not getting the progress that he wants and we deserve, but we're gonna hold them accountable now because we're gonna rise up and we're gonna say, you challenged us and here's our solution, come back now. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Keep your hands raised, please. There you go. Next. Thank you for your efforts. Um, what if the other communities do not cooperate in dredging, for example, Nevada? Is that going to hurt our efforts? Great question. Uh, Nevada hasn't necessarily been at the table with us regionally as much as Santa Fe, Vallejo, and Napa. Plan for the worst, hope for the best. We don't need them. We know our cost is seven and a half million dollars every eight years. We're gonna grow seven and a half million dollars every eight years. We'll end up leasing the equipment because there's no reason to buy it and have it sit for six years. But we'll get our own dredging done our way. But, so we don't need that. But the boats could still get through that, that part of the area if they're- Oh, the Bahia neighborhood. Bahia. Is that what yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if more communities are like ours, will the boats be able to get to Pebbleton from? Oh, the up, up the river from yeah. San Pebbleton, yeah. yes. Yeah. Although I have to tell you, this last storm from a month ago, I, it's not corroborated yet, but the Public Works Department called me and said there are areas in the mouth of our river that are now less than a foot deep because that shoaling and the wind was taking place. So we're getting plugged up at both ends, and it's not good, but with regular dredging, yeah, they'll be back, and we'll have festivals around it, I'm sure. Next question. Yeah, hang on for the microphone so we can all hear you, I'm sorry. Um, hello, yes, I just wonder, when did the designation of the river change, and why? I believe it was 1957, and it was so that we could have access to federal funds to do our dredging, because we didn't know how to do it ourselves. And we got somebody else to pay for it. So it was a total win, brilliant idea to call it a river, but nothing magically changed with the waterway. It just changed in name and recognition federally. Thank you. Joe, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, have you looked into or do you have knowledge of how to decrease the amount of sediment and silt coming into the bay or coming into our um, our river and water district in the first place? Like, is there a way to reduce the, the sediment and silt at the source? You know, the, I think the, the truth of that is that we're really a tidal slough. Even though we, we call it the Petaluma River, we're subject to tidal influences, we're subject to siltation, and I don't know that there is a way to stop it. I mean, I've heard people talk about, well, we can do locks like they do in Belmer and Keys, and, I, I can't even imagine the kind of traffic and, and the expense of building those. So siltation in our environment is just one of the natural forces that you have to keep fighting against constantly, which is why I really favor an assessment district and not a tax, because taxes have sunset. They're there for a specific period of time, and then we gotta reinvent the wheel all over again. So I'm really not interested in just pleading with another fund and I'm not interested in doing this again unless there's organized opposition and it's not working. Yes, sir. Thank you for, for the presentation. I, I appreciate the creativity that's going into this. A couple, couple of 
issues. Number one, if, if there is no guarantee that the Corps of Engineers is going to do this initial dredging uh, to give us seven years in which to raise the necessary money, and, and I think that's a really important thing to have in your pocket and writing somehow, um, why not why not make this flexible enough to basically purchase bonds and pay off bonds? This is the way things are done traditionally. I know that would involve a two-thirds vote, but bond acts are, are typically the way that you fund major capital projects. That's, that's one issue. The other issue is I want you to be sensitive, and this is a matter of salesmanship. A lot of people here in the room are people who are boat owners who are looking at this in terms of the, 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 the social and commercial aspects of bringing boats up the river. The most popular park in Sonoma County is Schollenberger Park. It's a riverfront park. It's a long walk along it. It's the most heavily used park in the city. And, and I, I think you really miss the boat. And number one, it's always been used for depositing dredge spoils. It was created partially with dredge spoils. But to discuss using Schollenberger essentially as a depot for them hauling those spoils out somewhere else, that's gonna, people are gonna see red. I would see red. Um, Schollenberger and that, that park area is not a depot for, for dealing with, with, uh, with red spoils. Well, let, let me address all three of those questions, and I, I hope there was only three. Uh, first, in a bond, sunsets, and we would have to go out and do this all over again like a tax. Uh, next, regarding Schollenberger Park, there is a, a geographical distinction between the actual Schollenberger Park and those dredge spoil sites. And I, I hope that as a river town, the community realizes that every eight years, if we temporarily use those retention ponds, which is what they were there for, then we avoid the cost that other communities have by having to ship it out to the ocean or the delta or out to SP-10 where we watch it come back. Uh, if the microphone's there, I think I missed your, your no, I'm sorry, I, uh, one more. I, I missed one of his other questions. I only addressed two and I can't remember the third, I'm sorry. At my age, I forgot my other questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I answered it successfully, I hope. <laughs> my question has to do with um, the traffic on the river, um, the heyday of the festivals and boating, on the road before my time in Petaluma, but I wonder what, what that I'm going to do to the traffic of the D Street Bridge if I want to have that bridge go up and down all the time. But with more, more people in Petaluma, the traffic problem is going to be horrible. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. For, for the half a million dollars a year in sales volume we're losing for the festivals that thousands of Petalumans enjoy. I live on the east side of town, one of the tract houses furthest away from the river, and I'm all in. So a little more traffic for that. I mean, I'm having more traffic for smart, but it's for a common good. I'm willing to sit there and, and tolerate it. So when we do have those festivals, a little bit of bridge going up and down, I mean, that's why it's there. So I, I'm willing to tolerate that. Other questions? Hi, I have a question kind of related to the river. If we're doing all this dredging and bringing in more tourism, it's a great way to do that. Do we also have a plan for the shores of the river to kind of build and maintain that as a boardwalk if we're having all these? I think that's kind of run down as well. There is no shortage of great ideas of how to access and use our waterfronts. From pocket parks I've heard of to walkways, but if it's essentially paved over by dirt instead of concrete, no one's going to use those amenities. But there are plenty of people that want to do that with grant monies available to them to make that a reality when we can show them a viable river. <coughs> Microphone. Yes, to answer a couple of questions, uh, one was the, uh, uh, the uh, Schoenberger Park. You're correct. Schoenberger Park is uh, four acres of the 126 acres that are set aside as a, as a spoil site, okay? So it is above tide level. People, that you notice during the drought, folks, that that whole place went dry because there was no rainwater, okay? It is unaffected by tides. It is not a natural wetlands. 
number two the that area has gone through the environmental impact reports five hundred fifty thousand dollars about four years ago and it was okay for another four cycles in other words there's enough room for four more cycles before anything was sold out of it number three um, i want to remind people that there was an area assessment through the uh, sonoma county water agency every parcel in petaluma paid a, a flood tax um, uh, I know because I'm, I sit on the advisory committee. That ran from 86 to 96. It was renewed 96 to 2006. That money, we, we gave $4 million to the city to help pay for the Corridor Engineer Flood Control Project. Okay? So I hope that I've answered some. Oh, and the other thing is about schedule. The schedule, I've been keeping track of the schedule of dredging and tonnage since 1971. It was on a four-year cycle. The upper part of the river was dredged every four years, the lower outer reach every six years. Okay? Four years and six years. So that was the schedule up until, um, uh, when was it, our last, the emergency, the emergency dredging? There was 2004. 2004, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. That was very valid. Other, other questions? Well, no, I think it was, a, was it about all the yacht club members in the room? Because no, no, I'm no, giving specific no, no, we're not going to all over town. I'm not going to have all the yacht club members. Oh, no, no. I don't know. She drinks there. Uh, no. No, the, 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 the question was, again, if, if the Corps of Engineers cannot come in and do this, we're hoping that they can come and do it right away. What if they can't? What if they're still asleep at the wheel? We don't have any way of raising money to start dredging right away. That would, once again, that's what leads me to thinking a bond act of some sort, and whether it's whether it's secured by 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 some sort of tax, whether it's secured by a, and I don't know if it legally can even be assessed on on a dollar fifty per door kind of a tax but, or or but, assessment. But, but you see that if they did. We have a mechanism to do it ourselves from now on. That's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'm in the room. The Army Corps threw down the challenge. We're answering the challenge. This isn't about hope. Oh, this is about demand. Come back now. This is what you said. This is what we've done. So if it was marginal this year, it will be mandated next year. Hi, Vicki Carroll. Thank you again for all of this. Um, the, uh, so let me see if I understand the timing of this. So if we have the assessment uh, vote in March, then when would you reasonably assume the Army Corps of Engineers would come and do that last dredge? I believe 2020, during the season they have to use. So where would the million and a half that Petaluma has to come up with for the Army Corps of Engineers reg, where would that come from? That was a conversation I had with Congressman Huffman, and I think, going back to the entrepreneurial spirit idea, if they're abdicating their responsibility on our river after one more time, we deserve to have the city share taken care of at the same time. So we asked them for the whole dredge this time, because if we're successful in March, they won't have to come back. And that's an it, because if we're not successful, they will have to come back. But that's a conversation we're going to have with our electeds in the Army Corps. Yeah. And in the plan for the worst scenario, maybe we want to think about that. Oh, don't plan for the maybe worst. this lady's donors <laughs> come up with a million and a half. Uh, it's clear that the city doesn't have it, they're under a burden. Yeah. And I, I think and it's equally okay. clear that if you. I mean, if you tell any reasonable elected official, look, it was costing you six million every six years for seven and a half million, you never have to come back. I mean, come on, that's a million and a half that's wisely invested, but that that's for a little bit down the road. But yeah. That is the okay. intent. Get them to pay the city share. Okay. Other questions? We've got one over here. You presented a, a timetable of eight years. And this gentleman mentioned four and six years. How did you come up with eight years? It's a matter of affordability. We've got a seven and a half million dollar nut, and when you look at the cost to spread around for a six year dredge, 
we can't afford it. And yet at the same time, if we make it more affordable and do a 10 year dredge, it's too long. So that's why I came up to eight years, along with the concept, if it works, and we're not depending on it, but if it works, the other communities will get on board with us. If not, then it's every eight years just with the money we raise, and that'll be enough. So would it be accurate to assume that his four and six years would be the more ideal cycle? I think a six-year dredge is very ideal. I just don't think it's economically practical when only the citizens of Petaluma have to pay. When it's Congress who can take more money than that, it eases the burden and, and it's feasible. But for us to do it every six years, I mean, that's, that's what, a million three a year, a million two a year. We're just not gonna be able to raise that much. It's, it's burdensome. I mean, Measure M was successful at what, $2 a month? And here we're giving a benefit of what Really, if we looked at the 14 miles of the river as a park in Sonoma County, the biggest park in Sonoma County, and for a buck and a half a month, you get to enjoy it and have things around it, even if you don't have a boat. Uh, I'm hoping that's a, an easier sell. Yes? Well done, Jeff. A really nice presentation. One of the things I think about is I lived on the east side when I was uh, a Petaluma resident, and I think um, the downtown and the people on the west side really would embrace this. And I think there isn't enough in the presentation truly to um, embrace the east side. Um, and how would you uh, change the presentation to do that? I need your help. We're gonna do this presentation all over. And again, like you, I lived on the east side, I came down, I enjoyed the festivals. I remember when John was announcing at the River Festival. It, it, it's a sense of hopelessness that we feel, including on the east side, where maybe they think it doesn't matter, that we can't get this problem solved the way we were. The game has changed, we need another solution. And we're gonna go sell that solution because we all benefit, and I'm gonna prove it. I'm talking to a leading economist right now. It's a really fascinating thing, but I want to quantify the value of the benefit of things like our festivals in town. What dollar value can I put on quality of life? If I can show an east side resident that you get 25 bucks a year, but it only costs you 18, mm -hmm. I might get a vote. Okay. So I'm looking at that. But meanwhile, a dollar and a half to save your river and not become what some of our neighbors have, I, I think their property values would be, have benefited if they paid all this time. But they suffered from exactly that same thing. The people under the water said, we've got to do it. The people on the hill said, are you nuts? I'm not near the water. I'm not paying. And they couldn't unify. And now they enjoy that. I don't want that to be Petaluma's solution. Other questions? Because I know you guys got to go. Yes, please. Have we done any polling? No, not yet. That takes money. We need to form the campaign. The attorneys need to draft the legislation that that campaign is going to then promote. And then we will probably do polling. But as much as I've been asked that by companies that do political polling and political campaign management, what choice do we have? I mean, if everybody says, no, nah, let it go, I'll buy some of the concrete, let's all meet Monday. I mean, we don't have a choice. We have to do this. And, and the game has changed. We can't keep expecting a different result by doing the same thing every year, which is just to go back and ask for money. We don't qualify, as this gentleman pointed out. So we need another solution. Yes? Just, just a couple of comments. So thanks again, Jeff, for a great job here. I think we all really appreciate the work you put into this. Uh, this is Tom Corbett. Uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to say is that there's a presumption that things will happen the same way or as they have in the past and over you know, into the future. And we're really not cranking into this equation what would happen uh, if we have uh, seas rise. And it seems like they are. I mean, there are island countries that are disappearing. So, uh, so that's going to have to be in, 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 added to the conversation and added to the equation at some point. Environmental concerns, absolutely. The other concern, our docks are being ruined. One of those pictures, the after pictures that Chris took, our dock is torqued and laying on the ground. 
We won't be far behind to hit our docks. And where's the money in the general fund to buy new docks? Yeah, it's not there. But one, one thought, too, is to get the, the, the attorney basin fully dredged. Uh, and if the Army Corps blocks it, the dredging under the uh, docks like they have in the past, we could remove the docks temporarily, float them down to the marina, let's say, and, and the Army Corps would dredge the whole darn thing, and then we put the docks back. And, but anyway, that's the kind of pie in the sky. The other thing I want to mention is uh, we floated the idea over and over again without using FEMA money. We've never got traction on that, but uh, my argument, and I think John's and others have argued that uh, even though FEMA only reacts, they don't do anything proactively, in my mind, they haven't finished doing the pay around, 40 plus million dollar pay around flood control project because the river doesn't have the throughput capacity or the flow capacity to handle another 150 year storm. So they need to finish the job. So I, I, I see protecting the $40 million flood project as a reason to protect it to come back one more time. But we've done a great job of believing the Army Corps every time they say, sorry, no. I want to believe the Army Corps when they said, you come up with a plan and we'll be back. Yeah, I, and I believe them too. I was in those meetings and heard them yes, say that. Yes. So hopefully the point that Bill was making that we don't have it in writing, but we do have a pretty solid promise and, and commitment. So you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because a, a high official in our town challenged me and said, well, what if the Army Corps doesn't give us a permit when we're doing it ourselves? Before I could possibly endorse your program, I needed it in writing that we'll be given a permit to dredge eight years from now. Yeah. And so I said, okay, I need to get in writing that if we dredge eight years from now, we'll be guaranteed a permit. There is a company in Fairfield that wrote that letter on the basis that if all we do is ask for what we've always had, we'll get the permit. And they're the ones that work with the Army Corps to get it done. So we will be able to achieve that with the Army Corps, and I don't want to make the Army Corps the enemy. They need money from Congress. Congress isn't giving it to them. So they're sympathetic to us to some degree, but they're the ones that challenged us, and we're coming back now, and we'll do it through our electives. And Congressman Huffman is eager to get this presentation in front of them. Yes, I've heard in every meeting that the Army Corps is very supportive of dredging our river. They just need the money, so I think you're right. But here's a question here. Your energy is wonderful. I've worked on partnerships before, and um, please keep at it. I'm concerned about who's going to follow in your footsteps and if there's any money for that person. You follow me? Well, you make yeah, but I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So, uh, well, you know, as long as I last until March of 2020, you know, that's, a, that's good enough, right? Well, but we want to keep this going, so. Absolutely, and I don't want to do it alone, so I need you, and that's why there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Put your name there, your email address. And at the end of this presentation, if you think this notion has failed, cross your name off. But otherwise, we're going to get a hold of you and see how you might help. Yes, sir. My name is Michael Chakro. Uh, I am new to Petaluma, but not new to dredging. Uh, I've had a boat in Santa Barbara Harbor for years, uh, which has a twice-a-year dredging cycle because of the way it is set up. Uh, my sense is that you may be aiming too low in what you're asking for. I wonder if you really know that a, every eight-year cycle is your right cycle. The Army Corps of Engineers says it should be three years up here and four years in the river itself. Are you asking for too little? Uh, are you putting yourself in a position where the project will fail for insufficient funds? That's a great question. And, and I'll address that this way. Uh, with my Axiom, instead of paying to get rid of dredge spoils, we're going to sell them. And it'll cost us less to do our overall dredge. If we end up doing the dredging ourselves as the so-called general contractor hiring a dredging company to come in under us and do that dredging, that so-called profit that was given to another company is now ours and it reduces our cost to dredge. So I think there are ways, especially with these other ancillaries, some committed, 
Means of funding our river dredging, like this 100,000 a year, where 800,000 would be available every cycle, I'm aiming high. And that's the job of the board, is to look at that and say, how can we always, that's their mandate constantly, how can we lower the burden on a Petaluman for the dredging needs that we experience? And yeah, we're gonna have inflation, and yes, they will probably go up over a buck and a half someday. But for now, I think we don't even need a buck and a half. When we implement this the right way. Other questions? I know we're coming up on 8 o'clock. Yes, sir? I, I don't think I need a microphone. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, my name is Greg Saber. Just to be clear, the core set for the upper portion of the river four years would be the normal cycle. However, as you alluded to, what would have generally happen over the history of the river since we've had this federal funding Four years would come along, nothing would happen. There would be crisis, you know, we'd generally go about six years by the time our elected representatives could get their earmarks through. So, so four years has never been something that was actually done on a regular schedule. And, and if you look at the city's report that they had commissioned for a, uh, on river dredging, the outer channel actually hasn't been done since the late 1988. Um, so the lower river and the channel into the river, it's, it's been much, much longer. And, and because so much time has gone by, that, that extra burden, that extra cost of what I've seen to be four times the normal amount of material that we need, 600,000 cubic yards in, in the dredge that we hope to get, 150,000 cubic yards average dredge for us, some years it's less. So to your point, if we keep this up and we keep it maintained, it may not be 150,000 cubic yards every eight years. We might, there were some years I saw that were 120,000. So if we keep it up, it will, it might cost less. One more question. We'll have a, I got six more minutes of your time here. You can walk away now if you want. But I want to make sure I get everything answered. Where's the microphone now? Oh, Jill's got it. Anybody with a question, raise your hand. Thanks, Jeff. Um, as an East Sider, but someone who works right next to the D Street Bridge, I'm curious if you've looked at the numbers by households and, and all your breakouts on the East Side versus West Side, just to see if, you know, how much we're looking at the East Side to support this in the numbers. We don't have a big enough divide in town between East and West, so we're going to charge you more if you're on the East Side or West Side. <laughs> no, I haven't broken it down. I'm looking at everybody. I'm using one of my primary goals that everybody pays a little, and that category, that single family resident, pays the same no matter where you are. Um, you know, the, will it take me longer to get down to your festival because I live on the east side? Yes, I'll deal with that. We'll both we'll play together. Another question. I could say something just positive about east side people. <laughs> <laughs> Rich here used to water ski on the river. I mean, there you go. And so does Susan. There you go. We're, we're going to be united in this, or it's not going to work, folks. And, we're on these side, you know, they come, and we would come for a festival. We all come for the antique fair from the east side. I mean, we there you go. Okay. The, the lighted boat parade has been really uh, a terrible thing for our family because it was a real tradition for us uh, to come down and then tour the boat back. The river is. It's hard to tell them, but it, it would be a real shame if we didn't. Well, I'll, I'll tell really Yeah, absolutely. But I, I'm going to add to that and tell you that in my conversations with Lynn Marine, Santa's arrival, that boat was actually dredging a channel ahead of itself just to get to the dock. What if they go away before we're dredging? That event will go away too. Yes. So. I know you mentioned festivals a number of times, Jeff, and I think the festivals are great, but the festival, river festival was gone way before we had a problem really with the river. The more important part is that we lost 85% of our river tourism, and that's about people coming out and enjoying Petaluma, being able to moor their boats, get off, go have breakfast, go to a movie, go shopping, and enjoy a couple of days locally. Um, so, I think just in general, around tourism in general, it was really a big, you know, we had a lot of uh, activity on the river just a couple of years ago. It was wonderful just to be able to drive by and see a number of yachts in the, 
in a turning basin and just know that those people are enjoying pedaling. It was putting this on the map. It was a, as a tourism professional, I was able to write about being a river. We were a river town. Right now, I actually felt the faith when I'm actually saying, you know, we're a river town and come to enjoy our river because quite frankly, it's not there. So overall, our quality of life is enhanced because we have a beautiful, we were set apart from Sonoma County. We have a river running through us, you know it's a slough. You get to sit on site, you know, eating and dining. Right now, I was down there today. When you're sitting there having um, a coffee on the deck of the Riverfront Cafe, it's not particularly pretty anymore. You go to Dempsey's, it's not particularly pretty anymore. You go to Taps, you go there to sit outside and it's not particularly pretty anymore. And the same for, you know, Red Brook. And we were set apart because we were a river town and it was uh, attractive and enhanced our quality of life because of the kind of businesses that set themselves here. So the river has more depth and meaning and we have a small craft centre that's actually being created right now for people to kayak. And I know the Army Corps doesn't recognise uh, recreation sports as a reason to dredge, but it is tourism is a huge part of, you know, it's not just river tourism, it's tourism in general. When you come and your river looks disgusting and silty, it's a put off. We have people from all over the world that come to Petaluma to enjoy and be a location to stay, to, you know, discover Sonoma County and the river for us sets us apart. That's why it should be taken care of. Thank you for that. We are a destination location focused on the river, which is our heritage. Absolutely. Other hands. Yes. I just would like to say that for the children of Petaluma, all the children of Petaluma, growing up in Petaluma, that's very important, I think, to have the access from all sides. And the tourism, of course, is very, very important. And we like to see the boats, and we all benefit. But let's just say about the children. To be able to go on the river, use it, and no matter where you live, it doesn't matter because it's in the middle of town. And so I think we should do it also for the children of Petaluma. Right in a very special community. Well said. Well said. And thank you. If there are no other questions, it's almost 8 o'clock. I really appreciate you coming out. And uh, spread the word. Let us know how to find you. Thank you.